something that is big on uh, that Michael Beard preaches is staying in the moment, staying present, as I'm sure Dr. Matt and uh, Coach Jonathan have, have talked to you guys about. And um, that goes such a long way to be able to stay in the moment, uh, move on to the next swing, no matter uh, how your swing feels. Um, and then kind of I came in and I work at the intersect intersectionality of mental health and sports psych work. And something that if we can put everything under one umbrella is, and Dr. Matt and I have talked about it, is going out there unconditionally confident, right? And so the analogy that I used with the athletes is we all unconditionally love our parents. We may not agree with them all the time. We may not, we may get into fights. We may have disagreements, but that love doesn't go anywhere. So same with unconditional confidence. We may shank a shot, slice a shot. Our putting is not there, but if you show up unconditionally confident, then you know, okay, I didn't like that. We're going to, I'm going to continue to hit speed bumps, but it allows them to move on to the next swing. First introduced that concept to me, uh, Dr. Alex, it was um, you said that and it somehow it, it really resonated with me it, it like hit home and and I kind of started to unpack that with you like how did you what did you notice how did you come up with that term and and um, and I remember you saying just in your work with college athletes you're just noticing that a lot of the confidence was very conditional and 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 the the approach and the philosophy that you're trying to teach these student athletes was this unconditional confidence. So um, what was the, can I ask just how, how did you even think of that concept in, in your work? Yeah, it, it came to me kind of in working with all the athletes in all sports at Pepperdine. It, it you know, in, in a lot of the work I do, I try to draw, draw, and kind of identify themes that an athlete might be experiencing and then articulating it in a way to them that is digestible that they can tangibly take with them to the course or their sport, right? And so what we were seeing was phenomenal athletes, some of the top ranked athletes in the world um, have very conditional confidence and you could see that in their performances, right? Like whether something was going on outside of their sport or they're not playing well in their sport, you, I could see some of them in their performances, oh no, here it comes, start to unravel because their confidence started to come down. And Dr. Matt, I'm sure that you've talked to, you know, your students and, and uh, in your academy about it, like confidence, we can absolutely choose to be confident. We may not feel it all the time. We may not like what's going on. We may not be performing well. We may have all these uh, swing thoughts or, you know, for golf or anything else going on in our head. And at the same time, okay, how can, I'm just going to choose to be confident. That can help quiet our thoughts, unlock the potential so the athletes can get out there and do what they do best. We're, we're right at the end of our time. And I, I want to ask one last question, if I may, Dr. Alex, um, how do you train unconditional confidence, like, like training at the gym? So something that we might be able to do, or the troopers here might be able to do every single day to train for this unconditional confidence, kind of like we train um, curls in the gym, you know, is there, are there reps mm -hmm. or certain things that you might advise? Mm -hmm. I, th I think this will sound very oversimplified, but asking yourself that question, you know, first working on all the skills that Dr. Matt has worked with you guys on, what are the ants that are coming up? Am I feeling rushed? It starts with awareness and then asking ourselves, am I unconditionally confident in this moment or is it conditional? Because if it's conditional, our play can go up and down. Okay, let me choose to be confident in this moment. Let's step back out there. And the more that we build that skill, practice that skill, it's going to move to more of the subconscious and we won't have to consciously think about it. Just like identifying the ants, being aware, so on and so forth. Asking ourselves, <clears throat> if I show up confidently in this moment, what is that going to look like? We know what it feels like. We've all played really well. We've all had amazing rounds. We've all had amazing performances. We know what that feels like. Okay, I may not be feeling it in this moment, but let me choose to be confident. I'd probably go out there and not have a whole bunch of swing thoughts, so on and so forth. Let me just try to go and do that by stepping into stepping to the T confidently. I don't know if that answered it, oh, but I feel what, like that was very oversimplified. 100%. Why? Because it's the practice of choosing and refocusing. It's the skill of refocusing. So number one, it's becoming aware 
of when we are starting to get that snowball effect and we got to catch that awareness. That's the first step. We just have to be aware, not judge, not criticize. It's just aware. And then that moment of being aware is a celebration. It's a, it's a micro celebration of saying, you know what? I caught it. It's like, I, I'm aware of it. That should be a little kind of mini celebration of saying, I'm, I'm doing the work. I'm aware that that requires work. And then it's like, okay, now that I'm aware, now I have a choice, right? Now I have a choice to refocus on something else instead. And those questions that you just posed, Dr. Alex, am I, Am I conditionally confident or unconditionally confident? Am I choosing to show up in this as my best self? Because that is a choice. What is that going to look like? You imagine it, you visualize it, and then you reenact it. So we here in MPGA, we, we don't say fake it till you make it. We say be it till you see it, right? Be it till you see it because motion creates emotion. Motion creates emotion. The more that you can act confident, the more that you will actually become confident. So I love that. And, and you kind of simplified it, but in a step-by-step -step process, awareness, number one, and then you choose, you have to kind of ask yourself those questions and choose to be it so that you can see it. So.